Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Ask Service Monster Show, where you've got questions for your service business, and we've got your answers. Today's question comes from Mark. He writes, Joe, I'm stuck. I really want to get off the truck. I feel like I'm getting close. I'm focusing on my repeat rate, which apparently he wasn't doing before. He wants some additional advice and fuel that will help him reach that goal. So I engaged. We had a conversation. And there's a couple things that in that conversation I was concerned with. I want to share with you some of the tactics that I shared with him and some of the conversation that we had to help you get your finances straight. Now, obviously, I'm a big fan of repeat rate. I think it's the biggest thing, biggest KPI, the biggest obstacle to most of your guys' growth. Followed by number two, your ability or inability to manage your finances, both personally and the business. But I'm only going to focus on the business today. So obviously, making more money is a big deal, and you want to continue to grow your company over time, and that will draw in more and more revenue. And there's three ways to do that. I've talked about this in other videos. You can increase your prices, which I think most of you should do, 5%, 10% a year. The second way, of course, is more clients. That's where repeat rate comes in. You bring in leads, and then over time, you're doing more and more repeat clients to build that general base, so more clients. And then number three, additional products and services. So what else can you offer your clients after you've established trust with them that they might buy from you? Now. Raising your top line revenue is great, and I'm a big fan, but don't get caught in the rat race here. Raising your price, raising your revenue, only to make no additional money on the other side, what's the point of that? And so we're going to talk about controlling your expenses, which is the real key, margins and cogs. We've had the conversation before about really dive deep into COGS, cost of goods sold. So I would encourage you go back and watch that one. This one's a little more high level though. We're going to focus on debt. We're going to focus on how do you control your expenses and you know, really how do you then fuel growth without getting into debt. There's a big difference between getting bigger and growth. Getting bigger just means more money coming in. Again, if you're not focused on expenses and cost of goods sold and margins, so what? Growth is a little bit different. It means you're growing. Like Think about this as a personal journey. If you're growing personally, you are getting better. You are becoming more woke. And it is an easier path to make the decisions that you need to make if you have that level of insight. So that's the difference, right? You don't want to just get bigger. You want to grow. And sometimes growing doesn't mean more income, yet at the end of the year, it means a bigger bottom line. I see it a lot over and over again, the busy fool, the person who's super busy, grinding all the time, working 10 hours a day, pushing the one year after year after year, and yet they're not growing bigger. And of course, I will say, yo, what's your client retention strategy? And number two, how are you managing your business finances? And like what was the case here, I was horrified to hear, I don't really separate the two. Look, if you're not separating your personal and business finances, you're doing yourself a huge disservice and you're actually exposing a much larger taxable liability. So be careful here. And I will say it's just dumb, period. On day one, you get your business license and bank account. Of course, on day two, you get your CRM, but you're really focused on establishing the correct behavior. Now, if you need to transition, if you're already operating as a whatever cash flow through your personal expenses, then I encourage you to stop what you're doing right now, hit stop on this video and go take care of that. I'm serious. Right now. Okay, great. Let's say that you're all focused. You all summed up. You've got your business and personal finances completely separated. Now what? You got to take control of this stuff, right? I would assume the vast majority of people watching do indeed have their finances separated and they're using a program like QuickBooks. The vast majority of you guys who will pay attention to me are going to be using QuickBooks. Internationally, we're starting to see a lot more from Zero, which is an Australian-based company. 
SaaS, software as a service, so they're online already. Uh, and it's a great product, something that we're looking to integrate in the future. But right now, with our core clients being United States clients, QuickBooks is where it's at. So if you're not using it, use it. If you have it and you do quarterly updates where you're shoving in receipts suddenly by the end of the year or once a quarter or whenever you think about it, get better at that. Make that an um, exercisable muscle, like do it at least once a week. Have someone in the company do it. Hire a bookkeeper to take care of it. This is like critical. Step one in controlling your finances is documenting everything that's going on and not in a flurry at the last minute, in a cadence, regularly, over time. Now, once you're documenting, once you're controlled, once it's all put into place, you can start to look at efficiencies, creating budgets, sticking to certain expenses, making sure that every dollar is accounted for. Now, the first thing I would say is avoid debt, period. Not, you know, not at all costs, not if you can, period. Avoid debt. Now, personally, I get the house argument, okay, but also on a personal level, no credit cards, like no, you know, layaway plans, no, you know, uh, on credit purchases. Like, if you can't afford it, don't. I said I was going to, I won't go personal. I said I wasn't going to go personal. All right, Joe, I hear you, but you know what? I've already bought my truck mount. I haven't bought my truck. I didn't happen to have 20 grand laying around. So, yeah, I got in debt so I could run my business. Like, I'm not going to hammer on you about it. I will say this, for the guys who are starting out, who are not yet acquiring debt, but they're looking at it, just don't. Manage your expenses correctly, start to build in a savings for the equipment that you need as you grow, and then use your own fuel and growth to do it. Don't get in the bad habit of acquiring debt at every turn. And I hear the arguments, right? Uh, yeah, but if my debt's only 3.5% interest and the money that I make from that machine is greater than, like, you can ma you're not going to math yourself to prosperity via debt. It's just not going to happen no matter how you want to justify it. So I know I'm going to catch flack for all this and hammering on the debt issue, but it's a real deal. I've seen way more businesses fail because they couldn't manage their debt than any businesses succeeded by using debt as the vehicle. VC companies, obviously, notwithstanding, but look at the stats on that. 90% of them fail. VCs hand out money like candy to 10 companies knowing one is probably going to be the one that hits and the rest fail fast. Get rid of them as quick as possible. All right, fine. I'm off my soapbox. So you've got some debt. How do you manage it? Well, Dave Ramsey is a good inspiration here. In the personal format, he created something called the Baby Steps. You save up a thousand bucks for an emergency fund. Step two is paying off your non-house debt credit cards, lowest to largest, not by ratio of interest, but by the amount of money you owe. And just start knocking them out, rolling up the amount you were spending on the smaller ones into the bigger ones, wiping that out. Step three is three to six months of expenses. And step four, start working on retirement and paying off your house. Great personal plan. Go listen to Dave on that. For business, it's pretty close too. If you're managing your expenses, managing your cash flow, you know where every dollar is going to go. Guess what? It's pretty easy to say, I'm going to dedicate a lot of this overhead, the, the profit that I'm making, to paying off that debt as quickly as possible. Okay, I'm, I'm done with that. Another mistake I see guys doing is diversifying too early. Now, I'm not saying don't diversify, right? If you're running a $5 million company, then yeah, let's talk about diversification. Let's talk about investing and using your fuel and horsepower and brain power and how much you can bring to the table to other companies and helping them out. I get it. That's great. Or maybe even leveraging your clients or your employees to do other ventures. Sure. But before your 10, 12 employees, a million dollars, a million and a half dollars, where the business can run with or without you, stay away from getting sidetracked with diversification. Focus on your goal and build the business till it can run without you. Then go chase whatever dreams you'd like. Look, finances, right, it's boring. Most entrepreneurs, including myself, don't want to do them. If I were to create this business by myself, I would be in a much worse position than I am now in this arena, guaranteed. Eric has been my go-to guy for this. He likes numbers. He likes making sure the books are in order and up to date on a regular basis. So 
Love that, but that's why I say every visionary needs a pessimistic accountant, someone to keep track of the books and keep your ass grounded. So if you don't have the flavor, if you have no desire to try to keep up on this, you've got to get some help here. Otherwise, you're just going to completely stifle yourself. Now, if you don't have that option, you got to be in it to win it, study some finance. Learn about calculating your cost of goods sold. Learn about top line revenue and bottom line revenue. Learn the difference between EBIT and EBITDA, because that A really stands for all the crap related to loans and debt. Understand the difference between cash and accrual, right? Where accrual is basically what you are owed and what you owe based off the invoices and bills that are being passed around. And cash, what have you physically handed out and physically received. So understanding the difference between those types of numbers and how that plays in the margins and cogs in your business is a big deal towards growth. Because what do you do then? If you're controlling everything, if you're separating your personal and business finances, you're recording it directly into your uh, accounting system like QuickBooks, if you're managing your budgets, if you're managing and eliminating and controlling your debt, and then whatever money you have left over is fuel you can use to go back in the business or to establish that three to six month nest egg. I want to focus on that just for one second. Why do I say three to six months? Payroll, if you want to continue payroll during a slow season, it's nice to have that on the books. It doesn't belong in your pocket. It doesn't belong in your Ferrari payment. It belongs in your company so you can make sure that employees get fed in December and January when you can't scrounge up enough work to support a four or five man crew. All right, guys, three points wrapping up. Number one, don't get caught up in top line revenue. Yes, it's a good metric. Yes, we can talk about it and use that as a barometer to measure each other. But it's about the margins. It's about the profit, right? Twitter hasn't made a dime and they're passing around so much ungodly money, it's crazy. Focus on your bottom line, your margins, and use a top line revenue for beer conversation. Number two, Control your finances. Don't let them control you. Decide where you're going to be spending your money. Decide that you're going to have savings and decide to eliminate or avoid debt at all costs. And number three, be a student. At least enough so that you can talk to the person who's managing your books for you. Until next time, guys, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go check out the demo and give us a call.